Today we're going to be taking a look at this, the new version 1.1 Hulink. Now if you don't know what Hulink is, it's a wireless digital command and control system that allows you to transmit wireless video up to 20 kilometers, but also control your Mavlink based aircraft as well. I have made a lot of content on the original Hulink system and if you're interested in seeing a complete overview of it as well as some of the other videos, I will put a link to that playlist in the description. The new version 1.1 is an updated version of the Hulink with some little tweaks here and there and today I'm going to explain to you what the differences are between the original one and the new version I've got here. Before I get into it though, I just want to say a massive thank you to Ben at 3DXR for sending this one over. Ben has been a massive supporter of this channel and I would not have been able to make any of my QPilot or Hulink content without his support. If you're someone who is looking to build yourself a drone, build yourself an aircraft or use any QPilot, Mavlink or Ardrapilot based system, you really should consider checking them out. There is a link to his website in the description. They are one of the largest dealers in the UK for not only QPilot, but many other drone and aircraft related systems as well. And if you're after anything, including this, please do consider checking him out. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a look at what's changed. Okay, so the new updated version 1.1 of Hulink is basically the same device, just with a few tweaks. For instance, the new 1.1 has a higher brightness screen, now a thousand nits instead of 600 nits. We have an ethernet port on the ear unit and an SD card slot on the ear unit as well. You'll also now notice that the ground station comes separate from the ear unit with regards to the box. That means that there are some differences of what's included as well. So for instance, the ground station has its parts and the ear unit has its parts. And there's some additional bits in here now that we didn't get on the original version one. What we'll do first of all is take a closer look at the ground station and then we'll move over to the air unit. So starting with the Hulink control unit. Now this is the ground station, the main Hulink device. If you don't know what Hulink is, it is a digital FPV system and RC control link in one. This ground station based on Mavlink allows you to receive digital video from the ear unit and it has a built-in remote control system that will send your control systems back to your drone via S-Bus. Now, the main hardware on the Hulink hasn't changed at all. The version 1.1 externally is identical to the original Hulink version that we had before. The screen size is the same. The remote control sticks is the same. We have the same buttons on the front. We have our control wheel, our button here, our same antenna inputs. On the bottom, we have the tripod, the SD card, as well as a micro USB. And then on the back, you will find your serial number and your license key for the Hearlink software. I have covered them over for the purpose of this video because they are specific to this device, but you will find them located on the back. We will talk about the spec on the Hearlink a bit more in a minute. I do have a full video on this device, but I will cover that again in this one in a moment. Also in the box, you will find the two machined steel sticks, which actually screw in place into the joysticks on the main device itself. Hearlink has always had really nice solid joysticks. Well, especially solid if you don't throw them around. And then you will find the two antennas that are included as well. And then underneath this, if I lift it up, just lift that out the way, you'll see it's just an empty area. This is where in the old version, the ear unit was kept, but that's now all changed because that now comes in a separate box. Now, as I've shown form factor wise, the new Hearlink here is exactly the same as the original one. Externally, there really is no changes. The only thing you're going to notice different on these is that screen brightness, which jumps from 600 nits on the original one to 1000 nits on this one. And we'll take a look at that specifically a bit more in a minute. Now, just to explain what the Hearlink system actually is, it's a wireless command and control and digital FPV system in one. The remote or the ground station has your built-in remote control functionality that transmits back to the E unit over SBUS, and it has the capability of receiving both telemetry and video from the E unit and allowing you to display that on the screen. The system will allow inputs of 720p 30 and 60 and 1080p 30 and 60 and has a latency of about 110 milliseconds and is capable of transmitting that wireless video up to 20 kilometers. 
Furthermore, it supports the Mavlink protocol and it uses either QGround Control, Solex or Mission Planner, allowing you to take complete control of either your PX4 or Ardra Pilot based aircraft or drone. This system gives you both video and control and it makes for a really nice compact all-in-one solution based on that Mavlink protocol, giving you complete command and control, as I've said already. Now, the main specification of the ground station is as follows. It is a 5.4 inch 1080p touchscreen based device with a thousand nits brightness based on the Pinecone S1 chipset. That chipset features four A53 2.2 gigs cores and four A53 1.4 gigs cores and has an SDR built in supporting wireless video and telemetry and control over 2.4 gigahertz. It has a range of up to 20 kilometers in FCC. It has a built-in speaker, two built-in microphones, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and GPS as standard. And it has a micro USB port on the bottom, as well as an SD card supporting up to 64 gigabyte cards. As I mentioned, it has built-in GPS, but it also has an external GPS antenna port on the unit at the top as well. The Hulink remote is powered by a 4,950 milliamp hour battery. And as I've said, it is capable of running Q ground control, mission planner or Solex, allowing you complete control over your Ardra Pilot or PX4 based aircraft. Now, just to demonstrate the brightness difference between the two units, we have the original Hulink here with the 600 nits display and the new Hulink with the 1000 nits display. At the moment, they are both set to minimum brightness. However, you can see that there is a difference here. The original one with the 600 nits display is on, but it's very hard to see. Now I've turned the lights off, whereas this one is actually still visible. However, if we now drag the brightness up on my original one, first of all, so let's get that up to maximum. You can see that that's there. And if I now drag the brightness up on the new one, you can see that there is a noticeable difference between the brightness of the displays on both devices with the new 1000 nits one being clearly visibly brighter. And it's also worth me mentioning at this point that the 1000 nits one, the brand new one, still has the screen protector on. So that's going to be taking a little bit of the brightness off as well. You can also see that there's a bit of a difference in the shade of the screens as well as a result of that new brighter screen. What I will say is overall, it's great to see that additional brightness on that new display. And it really does make a big difference being able to view this, especially outside. Now, other than that brightness change, everything else is exactly the same. Overall, the software is the same. The functionality is the same. It's just that on the new 1.1, we've got that much brighter display. Next, moving over to the ear unit. Now, as I've said, this now comes in its own dedicated packaging. The size of this ear unit is exactly the same as it was before. The real big changes here are the fact that it now has a dedicated ethernet port and it now also has a micro SD card slot as well. We'll take a closer look at the ear unit itself in a minute too. However, overall, it is exactly the same shape and size as the previous model. They also now include in this separate kit, a fan if you're going to mount the ear unit somewhere where it's not going to get passive cooling, helping with stability. You've got the two included antennas, which are the large flat panel antennas like we've seen before. And then if you lift the lid of the box, you'll find all of the additional cables and connectivity. So for instance, we've got a HDMI cable as well as the ethernet cable and USB cable for connecting to a PC for updating firmware. Now, just walking you through the features and spec of the Healink ear unit. On the side, you will find our power input port, which is seven to 12 volts. We have a micro USB, our reset button, our two LEDs, our UR input for our telemetry, so UR in and out, and our S bus in and out for our control link. If we flip it over to the other side, you'll now find the new micro SD card slot. This is a future feature. It isn't actually working at the point of me making this video, but this will allow you to be able to upload applications or use it for potentially DVR recording as well. If we look around this side here, we have our two micro HDMI inputs. These allow you to input from a compatible camera on any normal HDMI protocol up to 720p 30 or 1080p 30 or 60. On the other side here, you will find the antenna inputs, though this is where we connect the antennas 
for the transmission. And finally, on the top here, under this little rubber cover, you will find the new dedicated Ethernet port. This is going to allow you to use the Hueling system with Ethernet. You can plug in a special cable, which they include in the box here, and you can then, on the ground station, plug in a compatible Ethernet adapter into the micro USB port on the bottom, giving you that full Ethernet protocol over the ear. Now, specification-wise, the Hueling ear unit has the same SOC as the main ground station. That is that Pinecone S1, which has that huge amount of processing on board. Four A53 cores at 2.2 gigs, four at 1.4 gigs. It has the SDR as well as all of the DSP as well, allowing you to be able to run custom applications on board if you wanted to. It features one gigabyte of RAM, four gigabyte of storage, 10 and 20 megahertz bandwidth options on the video, as well as a range of up to 20 kilometers from its RF output. Overall, the main spec of the ear unit is exactly the same as the last one. The only real changes here is the fact that they've now added ethernet connection on the top, and we now have a dedicated micro SD card slot for future use. Now, size and shape wise, the Hueling ear unit is 78.5 by 30 by 15, and it weighs just 98 grams. This device obviously isn't designed for traditional FPV. This is really for high end digital video, whether that be a commercial industrial drone, whether that be something that you want to be able to attach a normal HDMI input on from your camera and transmit that long range back to a ground station. Now, as I've mentioned, the real biggest difference for users on the 1.1 version is going to be that brighter screen. You do, though, have that dedicated Ethernet port, and that is going to help make integration with Ethernet simpler in the future. You could actually use Ethernet on the original Hueling system, and what you had to do on that was use a USB adapter on the ear side and on the ground station. Now, though, with the dedicated Ethernet port, you will only need an Ethernet adapter on the ground side. There is no dedicated Ethernet port on the Hueling ground station, which means you still need to use a compatible USB adapter. I'm going to make a dedicated video on that in the future, and I'm going to walk you through that process of setting up Ethernet on Hueling. And if you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure you are subscribed. Now, we do also have that SD card, as I've mentioned as well. There's no real use for that today, but we're going to hopefully see that develop in the near future as well. And it's going to be interesting to see what they come up with as time goes on on that one. Now, just before I finish this video up, I just wanted to demonstrate that live view video in action. As I've already said, I have a proper video on this system walking you through everything, but just to demonstrate it quickly, we have our Hearlink ear unit connected to this action camera via HDMI. This connection on this camera is a little bit temperamental, so I just wanna be careful when I move it because it does have a habit of disconnecting. That though is then connected to the cube orange via the telemetry connection. Yes, I know it's gold, but it's actually a cube orange, and that is running larger pilot. You can then see we're getting wireless video to the Hueling ground station. We then have all of the telemetry options showing as well. So we have the telemetry from this unit, the live video and the RC link then going back into the flight controller. Now, the real nice thing about Hueling is the fact that it is an all in one solution. We've got the remote control, the telemetry and video. And as you can see there, let me just be careful to move that in the right way. You get that live view video showing through without a problem. Now, it is a system that does have more latency than the others that I'm used to demonstrating on this channel. For instance, it's not as low latency as DJI, HD0, or the Avatar system, but it's not designed to be. This is a product that is designed to give you high quality stable video over long range as part of a ground station, about 100 milliseconds, absolutely fine for the application this is designed for, such as Cube Pilot with Ardra Pilot or PX4 on larger aircraft such as camera drones, industrial aircraft, or anything where you need to be able to put cameras into. The other nice thing is that it does have two HDMI ports, so not just one, and you can switch between those HDMI ports live via the app. So if you had two cameras connected, you can swap from one to another, and there's going to be lots of other features coming in the future, picture in picture, things like this, allowing you to have options that you won't get on any other system. Another nice feature, because this is a single telemetry system with it all built in, means that you can even configure your aircraft via the app as well. So for instance, if I just scroll there into vehicle settings, and there you will see all of the params and options for Ardra Pilot or PX4, allowing you to do your configuration. Okay, so that's the new Healing version 1.1. As you can see, the big differences are Ethernet, 
brighter display and that SD card slot for future use. Now, there will be more videos coming on this in the future and I will cover that Ethernet support in a specific video as well. I'm just waiting on a few bits to come before I'm able to do it. I want to say a massive thank you over to Ben at 3DXR for sending this one over to us to have a look at. I will put a link to his website in the description if you're interested in getting Cube Pilot, Link, or anything for your drone, plane, rover. He does stock a massive amount of equipment and please do consider supporting them if you do want to get yourself something like this. And again, as I've said, the link's in the description, so please do check it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. If you've got any questions, please do put it in the comment section. I'll try and answer it. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.